Hi, I'm Jamie Smith. Thanks for joining me for this behind the scenes look at this year's stunt card. For several years, I've been involved with the Dukes of Hazard shows where we jump cars and crash cars. And we usually take a car like this one or this one and cage it and jump it and it, it crashes and goes to someone's home and they either repair it or put it in a museum. This year, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to start with a car completely different because I feel that if this car has a VIN number, it's repairable no matter how much rust is in it. There is parts out there available to put it back together. And if it's too rusted to put back together, as some may think, it's too rusty to be a stunt car, it's unsafe. So to put it back together, it could be put back together on the road, not wrecked and crashed repeatedly. So take a look at what we use this year for our stunt car. My brother Bob and I have been working with Ben and Alma at the Dukes Fest for 17 years. And um, we've had the privilege and the honor to work with Tom Sermento and the Corey Eubanks, Russell Solberg, Alan Wyatt, the late Alan Wyatt Jr. And uh, had an awesome time for many, many years helping those guys, doing stunts with them, putting them in the car, doing stunts. And this last Dukes Fest in 2017, Ben Jones and, and his wife Alma asked me to bring a General Lee jump car to jump two days in a row. So I needed a charger that would survive two jumps, one on Saturday and one on Sunday, and I wanted a very safe car. So I started with a car that had very low miles on it, so obviously it wasn't a vintage Dodge Charger. It was a 1999 Ford Crown Victoria. And a lot of people ask me why I started with that car, because one, they're plentiful, there's a lot of them around, and two, I could choose which one was the best one for the job. The one that's the safest, the one that has the lowest miles, uh, that's been well maintained by a police department, and uh, I already owned the car and I had earmarked it for a charger. The wheelbase was very close to what I needed and the interior I didn't really care about. So I wanted to leave as much of the interior in as I could so that I could keep all the computers in place, um, not, have to, not have to mess with wiring and uh, drivetrain so much, just make it the General Lee. So I took a 1999 Ford Crown Vic and cut all the body off of it with a Sawzall, and I took an air ratchet, and uh, with a little bit of help, uh, in three hours we had the thing down to a bare frame and floorboard, and started assembling 69 Charger sheet metal around the Crown Vic. So normally you take a car and you put a roll cage inside of it, and this is kind of half and half. The A-pillar is 4130 thick wall uh, tubing that is the A-pillar, but it's also the roll cage. So I was able to use a real charger windshield inside the, uh, the charger frame as such because it fits the Auto Metal Direct roof and the Auto Metal Direct uh, cowl and the A-pillars are fabricated uh, with the roll cage. So there was a lot of things I was able to do that I didn't expect would work as good as it did but it, it came together quite quickly as it went from a Crown Vic uh, running and driving car to a charger shell in three days running and driving as a charger. Uh, finished the car, hand built the grill. Most of the panels came from Auto Metal Direct. Auto Metal Direct has the stamps for the door scans, the rear quarter panels, the roof, the uh, package tray, the uh, rear tail light panel, the lower rear valance. They can they make every single piece, and I could have ordered every single piece from Auto Metal Direct. There was a couple things that were back ordered, and I had a deadline since the event was the end of July. So since my brother and I have built about 20 General Lees out of real chargers that are you know, nice restorations, I had a lot of ragged parts left over that I couldn't use on a customer's car, like the hood and deck lid have big rust holes on the bottom structure. This car, it doesn't matter so much because it looks good on the outside and it flew through the air fine. Um, so I used uh, a, a real charger hood and a real charger deck lid that was in the scrap pile. So I saved about $1,000 and the two front fenders, I just poured a whole bunch of Bondo in them and used them because they're gonna work and if they got banged up, I'll just cut them off and put some new ones on. Uh, so I saved a little bit of money because it was my own personal car by using some second rate parts, but it still looked good flying through the air. Auto Metal Direct makes every single piece. So this car could be built with zero vintage parts from a Dodge Charger, only a Ford Crown Vic, Auto Metal Direct sheet metal, and some stainless trim that's now can be bought aftermarket. Uh, PG Classics in year one has the, the, the mirror, the uh, fuel uh, cap uh, can be purchased new. We, we usually put an aftermarket one on the cars that we build as nice cars. Uh, this is a vintage one that I had, and I cut the cut the uh, tube, and it actually fills gas into the Crown Vic fuel tank. 
Uh, Power and Performance Magazine has an article out on this car right now as a black car because once I uh, got the car put together, welded together, and primered in black, I uh, took it and used it in a music video down in the Los Angeles area, drove it on two wheels through the dry lake bed, and um, they needed a flat black car, so it really did look good in flat black until I got it back to the shop here to make it orange and get it ready for, for Ben and Alma's event. The grill is not a 69 Charger grill. It's just some thin aluminum that was left over from an airplane project I was working on. And I just rolled some aluminum and painted it silver, painted an IP silver, used some vintage trim around the ends that can be purchased from Brewers Performance. Uh, and the, the, the uh, venting is just a box fan that you could buy at Walmart, uh, believe it or not. And sprayed it black, screwed it in, and um, there you go. Looks like a Charger grill. I put a piece in behind where the headlights would be so it looks like real headlight doors but left the middle venting so the radiator can get air. The bumper is uh, just a vintage bumper we had uh, from a Charger project my brother and I had. Uh, so I slapped that on. The push bar is out of AJ Thrasher's jig from Warner Brothers. It's numbered. So the, um, the visual looks very close to what the generally would be. The radiator core support is a little lower just because of the way the Ford car was built and it did kiss the ramp a little bit even with my skid plate. On day one, I overjumped slightly because we had such a problem getting traction in all the mud that I that I was on the throttle hard to make sure that I cleared the uh, the landing ramp well. And uh, day two, it was dry and dusty, and and the car landed perfectly. But there's a little damage there. But you know what? That's just history of the car. Now you know the story on how the Ford Crown Vic became the General Lee. It's not even a Dodge, but you know what? It runs good and it was a safe car and it carries the body well. So I've had a few people ask me about building one of these for them. And I'm not saying I won't build one, not right now. I've got a lot going on, but um, you know, it's kind of fun to own because it, um, you can't really hurt it. And if you do hurt it, you can always just replace that part that you hurt. So here you go. General Lee on a Crown Vic chassis. Thanks for watching this video.